Well, hello everyone. Uh, as I was introduced, my name is David, and I'm here to make a confession to you uh, that I am an overachiever. And like many of you in the audience, my life has been defined in large part by my pursuit of success. But how do you define success? Do you define it externally by your achievements or internally uh, by your state of being? But let's rewind to the beginning. I was born in Bolivia uh, and immigrated to, uh, to Canada with my family, uh, with a li little more than the shirts on our back. Uh, and it was drilled into me from a very young age uh, that I needed to become a doctor or a lawyer. Unfortunately, I was of a more creative disposition. Well, not to disappoint my parents, I fulfilled the family goal and finished a law degree, while at the same time rowing varsity uh, for the Thunderbirds. Go Thunderbirds! My parents were proud of my success, but I started to realize that I was not. So instead of practicing law, I decided to head off to Vancouver Island and join the Canadian national rowing team. Well, that was short-lived. And while in Victoria, I met my future business partner. And he and I became, began a small Remax office, which quickly became the number one producing Remax on Vancouver Island, top 100 in Canada. And by my 30th birthday, we had a multi-award winning sales team, and I had become the young, one of the youngest agents in Canada to be awarded the Remax Hall of Fame Award. <laughs> Keeping up with my cohorts, I settled down, I bought a house, I had a family. In spite of all the outward assurances from my family, friends, and coworkers that I was indeed successful, something was missing for me. That sense of personal success was elusive. But before I could take a, a pause and begin to search my soul for what was missing, the financial crisis arrived. And just like that, much of what we had accomplished was now in jeopardy. Sales came to a full stop overnight, and our brand became synonymous with the crisis. So I did the only thing I knew how to do, which was to knuckle down and fight to save what we had built and to ride my bike. But a moment of dissonance happened. I realized that I was fighting to save someone else's version of success. By age 34, I felt completely lost in my pursuits and I began to feel trapped within the life I had built for myself. Unable to return to my pre, oh yeah, um, excuse me. And then in November 23rd, my nephew uh, was brutally murdered in Calgary. And this made me stop. And I was unable to keep going with the path that I had built. Tragedy is a stark reminder that all our best laid plans often go awry. And I began to take stock of who I was and what was important to me. I had been postponing my dreams for some future date to arrive. And the reality was that it wasn't going to arrive until I decided that it should arrive. Before I went to law school, I watched a film at the Norm Theater at UBC. During the screening, a woman in the audience went into hysterics. The show was paused, the lights turned on, and the woman given medical attention. And in that moment, I made the tacit decision that one day I would make movies. This was in the year 2000. Now, with that realization, I was unable to return to my previous life, and I took the proverbial leaf of faith. I transferred full control of my real estate brokerage to my partner, amicably split with my spouse, and went back to school at age 36. I grew my hair long, added a mustache for good measure, and started from square one at Vancouver Film School. And guess what? For the first time, I felt successful. While at film school, this wonderful group of creative in individuals and I came together to make a feature film, which was dedicated to the life and memory of my nephew. The film is about a troubled teen who finds redemption on a Salt Spring Island farm. This film eventually found a home and has been distributed. I was invited back to Victoria for a homecoming, surrounded by my former business colleagues and past clients. The moment was reaffirming and made me aware that all the accomplishments, hardship, and tragedy of the previous decade had laid the foundation for me to pursue my dreams. So, off to Hollywood, right? Feature film under my belt? Well, wrong. If you thought practicing law, selling real estate, or pursuing Olympic medals was competitive, you have no idea what the film industry was like. Filmmaking is, above all other things, filled with a constant stream of rejection and obstacles. And like all mountains we climb, the first step is always at the bottom. I joined the film industry as the guy who claps the slates. 
And while working tireless hours on local film sets, I continued to develop my craft as an independent director and with the support of regional broadcasters. And then something interesting happened. My old life collided with my new life. A past client of mine who had been a loyal supporter of my shift into filmmaking forced me to meet an old friend of his who was also a UBC alumni and varsity athlete. I quickly discovered that this new acquaintance of mine also suffered from the condition of being an overachiever and like myself came to the realization that it was now or never to pursue his dreams of being a filmmaker. And just like that, Graham and I founded our production company and have had the wonderful privilege to travel around the globe the past year promoting our projects. Well, during this time, the Directors Guild of Canada invited me to join their ranks as an emerging director, which shortly thereafter led to my first professional directing gig. Coincidentally, <laughs> The Wrong pre uh, Patient premieres on Lifetime this December, so if this is your sort of thing, please tune in. And this past September, I got to spend a week with some of the most talented emerging artists uh, in the world and fulfill a goal of participating in the Toronto International Film Festival Filmmaker Lab. And I realized that this creative group of individuals all shared a common thread. We had all overcome personal adversities with the desire to use our experiences to, to craft stories. I'm not sure where my story goes from here. Each day I continue forward taking baby steps up this mountain, sometimes looking down at how far I've come and other times looking up at how far I must go. Graham and I continue to produce and develop films, so keep your eyes open for these posters in the coming months and years. And from one overachiever to another, I encourage you to trust your instincts, embrace change, and find your own personal definition of success. The tools that allow you to be successful to navigate your professional degrees can be applied to anything you put your mind to. And most importantly, take the time to celebrate your successes with those closest to you that are always in your corner. Thank you.